Greetings Matanistas, it has been a hard few weeks for me. First of all the dark days of the international break and then when City played so well to Slaughter United at the weekend I was caught up in an event in Madrid. But not to worry, I'm back in the lovely cool autumn weather of Manchester, perfect for a match. I'm gagging for it, so let's go and watch Manchester City play Copenhagen in the Champions League. Well, although there are rumours that Haaland will be rested tonight, I'm really hoping he does start. We need to win this game because Copenhagen, while they might not be the most famous or best team, these teams always do their best and try their best when they have a big Champions League night away. And with Dortmund only three points behind us, we need to make sure that we win these games so that we win the group. So I'm confident City will put out a strong team and put on a strong performance. I'm actually here a bit earlier than usual, so before we have our main food segment, how about a bonus snack? So this Chinese street food van called Jerry's, which was established in 1898 apparently, serves some things I've had before like fried rice and chow mein, but it has a couple of things I've never had before. And if it's popular enough with Chinese people or Chinese students, then it's good enough for me. So I'm going to try something called a Jian Bing, never had it before, looks like some sort of pancake. And it started tipping it down. What a great decision it was to eat something from the street. You could have had beef, chicken or prawn or spicy versions with cumin of all of those and I went for beef and I could have had duck as well. Anyway, next problem is, even though it stopped raining, is where am I going to eat this? Well, I'll just have to plonk it down somewhere that's not too wet. I've torn open the bag and it's like a couple of egg pancakes. I'm going to use the fork. It's going to be too messy otherwise. The portion is so big, in a few hours I probably won't be able to eat before the game. So for seven quid, that is not bad value for money. Just not a good idea to try this sort of thing when it's raining. And I have a feeling I'll have messy hands after this as well. Hmm. yeah. It's like a crispy beef that's a very popular dish with British customers and probably European customers as well in Chinese or Cantonese restaurants. This time rather than being sweet, it's with cumin. So there is no way at all I can eat this one-handed if you can see it clearly in the picture. So I'll get on with it and describe it to you when I've finished. That has got a good flavour, wow. Egg, meat, vegetables in a rice flour pancake. That really was good, it was quite exquisite. And as I said, it's so big that that will keep me going until after the match. I mean, a good four or five hours, I reckon. The service is a little bit slow. They give you a ticket number and they just call you when your ticket's ready. It's not because they're slacking, it's because they've got a lot to do, just two of them serving all the customers. But in my opinion, when it's freshly made and tasty like that, well worth the wait. Anyway, my friend Kevin used to tell me, you never get wet in the pub, so I'm gonna take his advice now. Well, it's great to be back at the Monk again after all this time, all three weeks, I have to add, and I've gone for the Faith Hazy Pale Ale. A bit of a strong one, but I thought I'll have two strong ones rather than three or four session ales. Oh yeah, that's good hoppy, fresh and citrusy, that is mutton-esque, I'd say. Anyway, on to the game. My thoughts about the game really ought to be comfortable for City. I know teams from lesser known leagues do really give this 150% because it's so big for them. But as long as we match them for effort, 
I'm sure we'll be okay. No room for complacency though, I've seen these ties get mucked up before, and there are some rumours that Harlan might be rested for this. If so, it would only be, in my opinion, a good idea to give Alvarez a bit of a run out. I don't think it's a necessary rest for Harlan because he's not going to the World Cup, and after what will be admittedly a hectic month, he'll have a month and a half doing nothing. And my score prediction would be 4-0 to City. I don't get many of them right, well, the team news is out, and it is very, very interesting indeed. A radically different lineup to what I would have expected. First of all, in defence, Gomez, Sergio Gomez, gets a start at left back, which well merited. And it's good to see both Diaz and Laporte, with Laporte having been a long time injury, starting the game. Cancelo is always at right back. And in midfield, Mares gets a start, place of Kevin De Bruyne, who obviously Guardiola thinks deserves a rest. And up front, having played for a long, long time without any strikers at all, we have both Haaland and Alvarez with Phil Foden dropping down to the bench. Should be interesting to see how they play together. Two strikers up front has gone bang out of fashion but as always I trust Guardiola come on City. Once a juicy cross comes in like that, Alman Harlan, he's never going to miss. I knew it was going in as soon as he touched the ball. 1 0 City. shot from the edge of the box. Keeper did well to save it, but as always, who was in the right place? But Erling Haaland, 2-0 to City. And to be honest, on a good day, that would have been Sergio Gomez's, or Gomez's first goal for City in the Champions League. But as it is, another one to Haaland. Ball worked 
beautifully to the wide areas again. Not quite sure what happened there because it was ping pong in the area. Definitely an own goal. Not sure who the defender was who got the final touch there. So 3 0 to City after 40 minutes. Copenhagen are doing one better than United at the moment. What? Oh, how did you miss that? Oh dear. That was a rather poor finish. Would have given myself a chance of finishing that one. Never mind, 3 0 doesn't matter so much. And had I been blindfolded last season, that would have almost certainly been a guess at Sterling who'd missed that. As always, not a hope in hell of getting a beer or any of the refreshments at half-time, unless you get down 10 minutes before half-time, or are prepared to miss the first 5 or 10 minutes of the second half. Anyway, 3-0 to City, a real walk in the park. Haaland, I mean, he always seems to know which position to take, even anticipating the defender's errors. He is absolutely incredible. Get that man on a massive, long new contract now, Mr Mansour. City will doubtless make plenty of changes in the second half but even with feet off the pedal I think we'll get more chances quite a lot more chances if you fancy a Copenhagen win at this point or even a draw you can get 250 times your money with the bookmakers I believe on running and play bets I don't see a hope in hell of a comeback from Copenhagen but let's see but what I do hope for are more goals from City so indeed Haaland has been taken off and I know Pep Guardiola rates the substitutes who's come on, Cole Palmer, very highly, so he'll be keen to impress. I don't think there'll be any letter. He's given it, he's given it. Haaland's not on, so a chance for Mares to miss again. Oh! Well, for all my criticism, it was a well taken penalty. 4 0 to City. Go on. Go on. Oh. Copenhagen came out to play and they were picked off. Great work in the middle by Palmer and eventually Alvarez stuck it away. And I mustn't forget that my man Mares did actually get the eventual assist to enable the tap in there. So I'm not always critical of Riyad, am I? Well, rather than go straight back, given that there's a limited number of buses due to industrial action and a massive queue in the rain for the trams, I'm going to hang about a bit here before heading off home. Now, of course, I have the souvenir shop open, a big square with post-match analysis and usually experts talking about the goals and some goals from the other matches. They also have a little open-air bar which is undercover, so that's the one for me. Easter, so a change of venue for the wrap-up. 
I'm at a pub called the Waldorf, which isn't far from Piccadilly Station. Between Piccadilly Station and Piccadilly Gardens in the centre of Manchester. So what did I take away from that game? Well, Haaland was superb as ever. He's always in the right place, whether it's a tap-in or a shot. And I was especially impressed with his positioning when the goalkeeper spilled the ball. But I thought everybody who played today was sharp. Everybody stepped up to the plate when they were needed. OK, they've not been getting so much game time because everybody else has been playing so well, but they did their jobs well tonight. And it was great to see a lot of the youth players getting a good run at the end of the game. In terms of where it leaves us in the group, we're on nine points, three wins out of three. Dortmund are on six, three behind us, so we might have to take a bit of care with that away game in Dortmund. My understanding is if they beat us, then it comes to the aggregate over two games and away goals still rather obscurely count there. So, if they keep winning as well as us, then we have to make sure we don't lose 1-0 or by two goals. But let's face it, if we play at our A game, we'll do enough. Probably beat them, but we'll certainly get a point over there and advance in first place. Don't want a nasty draw as Super 16 or whatever you want to call it. Always better to start your difficult games when you get to the round of eight. Not much to add then, so the way City are playing at the moment, it's given me a thirst. Such a thirst, not just for the bit. But to watch City again. But thankfully, in a few days' time, we're at home to Southampton. So you, Matanistas, and I will get some more in a few days' time. Until then, I'm going to love you and leave you. Keep liking, sharing, subscribing, and most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.